Hello, welcome to another screencast where I'll be discussing uh, meiosis kind of overall and some uh, specific details of meiosis. So by the end here, you should be able to describe uh, and explain the meiotic cell cycle, specifically being able to identify, describe the cells that undergo meiosis, uh, cells that are the products of meiosis, and kind of then the general overall purpose of meiosis. So why, uh, why is this happening? And B here, then the mechanism of meiosis. This is sort of how it's happening. Uh, so what are the stages or steps of what's happening in meiosis one? What happens in meiosis two? That's kind of the nitty gritty details. And then uh, C here, how the DNA, be able to explain how DNA and chromosomes is transmitted to the next generation via meiosis and fertilization. So we're going to focus on this meiosis part here. Right. And then D, uh, using uh, mammalian meiosis or meiosis in mammals as an example uh, to show uh, all of these details uh, up here, this meiosis 1, meiosis 2, the cells that undergo it, etc. So we had seen this before. This is the sexual life cycle of sexually reproducing organisms, and we're using humans as the example here. But do, of course, keep in mind that other sexually reproducing organisms, much as plants, the angiosperms, flowering plants, um, as, a, as, a, as a good contrast there, um, also will perform this. And the, the basic phases here are, of course, meiosis, which is reducing the chromosome number uh, from 2n to n. In the, uh, in the in the gametes, um, you also uh, that sexually reproducing. Well, remember that sexually reproducing organisms like fungi will also uh, do this, and they um, the gamete is not necessarily the the uh, result there, but instead in plants and in fungi, uh, the result is spores. And, and again, so spores are also haploid. But here in this diagram, we're showing you uh, mammalian. Uh, meiosis, you produce these uh, haploid gametes here that then reunite in fertilization. This is the second half of the life cycle to the uni uh, unity of the gametes here gets you this fertilized egg, this zygote, right, which then is going to grow and develop mitotically into the adult organism, right, the adult diploid organism here. Uh, another screencast and in class we will be focusing on what the difference is between mitosis and meiosis and there is definitely a difference between them but there are some things that are similar and so you're going to be thinking about that as well. So here we go with the meiotic cell cycle. Uh, so the meiotic cell cycle uh, passes half a genome right, from germ cell to gamete or spore. So the cells that are going to undergo meiosis are sometimes referred to as germ cells. Right? germ, germinating, new growth, new generation. Uh, that is kind of the, the emphasis there. Right? And you get a, either a gamete or a spore. Right? And in plants, this, this is plants and fungi, and in animals you get uh, the gametes here. So uh, we've seen this cell cycle diagram before where we have this interphase, and there's going to be a G1. This DNA is synthesized, and then this G2 Phase. So this is the same in the meiotic cell cycle. So in a germ cell, uh, germ cells are going to be signaled to undergo meiosis and not signaled to undergo necessarily mitosis, right? even though um, you get a lot of germ cells mitotically. But uh, we're talking about this special case here where this germ cell is going to be signaled to undergo a meiotic division. Right? So the first thing that does happen, similar to the mitotic cell cycle, is you get this, this synthesis of DNA right? where you're getting individual single chromosomes uh, being replicated into uh, the sister chromatid form there. So they'll sometimes also just, you know, quickly abbreviate this as drawing it like an X, but you're noticing that you have two sister chromatids there, identical copies. Right. Then after this G2, you get this meiotic phase. And the, the mei meiosis, there is two separate uh, sections here, meiosis 1 and meiosis 2. So there are two rounds of cell division. So this individual cell, this individual germ cell, here that uh, was signaled to undergo meiosis will undergo two rounds of division to end up getting then four cells down here. And the unique thing about meiosis is that one, these, these four cells down here are all haploid. This germ cell by definition has got to be diploid. So all these uh, cells down here, uh, these are either gametes or spores depending on who you are. They are haploid uh, and they are uh, genetically unique, genetically unique, which we'll discuss about in another uh, screencast. Right? And so these four germ cells down here are the result of the meiotic cell cycle. So what's happening here, this is kind of a more little bit more detailed view of what's happening, is that this homologous pair 
of chromosomes up here exists in a germ cell. So this is, again, supposed to be the germ cell. And that germ cell will be signaled to undergo meiosis. Well, the first thing that happens, though, however, is that all those homologous chromosomes, all those chromosomes, right, are going to replicate, right? So there is a uh, replication here in S phase, just like it was in the mitotic cycle. So all of those homologous pairs will, sorry, all those chromo chromosomes will replicate. Now, the interesting thing here, the difference in the mitotic phase is that the homologous chromosomes will pair up, right? They actually pair up, and this is a process that is called synapsis. Right? And the result of synapsis, so synapsis is a process. The result of synapsis is a tetrad. Tetra meaning four, and what do you have four of? Well, you have four chromatids here, one, two, three, four, right, in this homologous pair. So the diploid cell with this replicated chromosomes right here, this is what's actually going to then enter the meiotic phase. So in this interphase up here, notice that this is interphase of meiosis. That is the same, same thing except for you're going to have this pairing then in uh, the prophase one. Now, meiosis 1, then, is the first round of division. Right? And so you're going to get a cytokinesis splitting the cell there. But what happens here is that you uh, reduce the chromosome number from 2n to n. So you go from diploid to haploid here. And that happens because the homologous chromosomes, or the homologous pairs, uh, split right, from one another. Right? So a the maternal chromosome and the paternal chromosome separate. Right? So this is a key feature of meiosis right here. Right? One key feature is that you reduce the chromosome number, and it happens there in prophase 1. Right? Sorry, in, in meiosis 1. In prophase 1, you get the synapsis. Right? You get metaphase 1, where these homologous chromosomes line up on the, on the, on the plate. Right? And then anaphase 1, telophase 1, cytokinesis 1, you actually have the separating of the homologous chromosomes. Now, that brings us then to meiosis 2, the second round of division, right, that each of these uh, cells here will then divide. And now this is very similar to the mitotic right, situation where now the sister chromatids are going to separate. Right? So here the sister chromatids separate. Right? This does not reduce the chromosome number in the cells uh, anymore. This is just N going to N. Right? So these haploid cells down here, right, uh, unreplicated chromosomes, there's no, uh, no replication between these divisions here. Right? And so you end up getting four uh, cells. Each of them is haploid right, because of meiosis 1. Right? So the animations, uh, I put a whole bunch of links uh, to animations on Blackboard. Um, and so you can just go click there to your heart's content, watch this over and over and over again. So here's the static diagram. It's much better if you watch the animations, right? But I'll just talk you through this here real quickly. So an interphase, again, here are our, here's the chromatin. It's going to condense right, after the uh, replication. And so when you condense those chromosomes here in uh, prophase one, you notice that a couple things are happening. One is you are going to have the sister chromatids, sorry, you're going to have the homologous chromosomes pairing up in synapsis right, to form tetrads, one, two, three, four. And there will be crossing over uh, happening there at the chiasmata. We didn't mention that before. We'll talk about this as a key role in generating variation in another screencast. So the homologous chromosomes here pair in synapsis, exchange segments uh, in, at the chiasmata. This is the uh, crossing over bit here, you're generating um, uh, recombinant chromosomes here. Right. So this prophase, right, you have the spindle forming, right? you're going to have the centromeres with their, with their kinetic core proteins. Right. The homologous pairs then in metaphase are moved to the metaphase plate. Here's a very interesting point here is that this metaphase plate is in this plane, and the metaphase plate separates the homologous pairs. The question would be, right, how, how would metaphase and mitosis look different? How would this cell look if it was going to be undergoing mitosis instead of meiosis? That's something to, to think about, and we'll discuss that in class. Um, 
The, then in anaphase, what's happening here is you see that that homologous uh, pair is being separated, right? So one homolog is going to one pole, the other homolog is going to the other pole. So this is where the uh, chromosome number is actually being reduced here from 2n to n is in this anaphase 1, right? And then that's followed by uh, telophase 1, cytokinesis 1, right, on the left of this diagram. And now there is no replication, no replication here um, of all these chromosomes. And you go into this meiosis 2. Right? Now meiosis 2, all these cells are, are diploid. Sorry, strike that. All these are haploid cells. And they are going to be uh, undergoing meiosis 2. And now uh, prophase 1, there's no real nuclear membrane right there. Right? The uh, metaphase 2 plate is here. And the metaphase 2 plate lines up uh, down the centromeres here so that on either side of that metaphase 2 plate there's a sister chromatid. So now in anaphase 2 of meiosis 2, uh, anaphase 2 the chromatids separate and this is what makes it like mitosis right? um, and the sister chromatids then separate in anaphase telophase cytokinesis 2 uh, you have the regeneration of the nuclear membrane you have then two, two cells from this one and then two cells from this one for a grand total of one, two, uh, three, four haploid cells, each genetically unique right, because of that crossing over and also independent absorbent, again, which we'll discuss in another screencast. Now, in mammals, uh, <coughs> here you have the uh, female reproductive system. So in mammals, uh, meiosis occurs in specialized organs and tissues. Right? In plants, it occurs in specialized organs and tissues as well. Angiosperms, those organs and tissues, are called flowers. Right? Here in uh, mammals, the specialized organ in the female and tissues uh, where meiosis is going to occur is the ovary. So here is the ovary. Right? And you're going to see right here that in this ovary, there's a collection of cells right, that is going to undergo meiosis. And so we call this a germ cell. Right? Now, especially in a, in a mammal, a female mammal, we call this an oocyte. It's a primary oocyte. So this oocyte within the follicle is going to, and we'll just shift over to the left side of the diagram over here, right? So here we have this primordial germ cell in, in the embryo, right? So this is when, when uh, you were an embryo, you have this primordial germ cell called an oogonium that's going to go undergo mitotic division. And this is just making lots of uh, these oogonia. So the differentiation onset of meiosis 1, right? So now we follow this. We have lots and lots of these diploid cells inside that ovary. And then uh, this primary oocyte is a cell, is one of these oogonia that has been signaled right, to begin the meiotic process. And so now this primary oocyte will undergo the meiotic process. This is the completion of meiosis 1 and the onset of then meiosis 2. Now you notice in the, in the females that you have a disequal cytokinesis where uh, you get this polar body that has basically the nucleus and almost no cytoplasm whatsoever. Right? And then this is the secondary oocyte right here that makes its way to uh, meiosis, uh, meiosis 2 but then sort of arrests, and we call this the secondary oocyte. Right? This is the structure. This is the cell that is ovulated. Right? So in uh, female mammals, this is what's going to be ovulated, and this is what's going to then leave the ovary. So if you look at the diagram over here, here's the ovulation right, of that secondary oocyte. Right? That secondary oocyte has not completed meiosis yet, right? and when it's ovulated, if you remember from Bio 1, FLE, it gets ovulated, and now it travels down this oviduct or the fallopian tube, right? And if there were sperm present here, uh, if that sperm fertilizes the, the ovum, fertilize, fertilizes that secondary oocyte, that secondary oocyte will then be triggered to finish meiosis 2, right? And as that, this, so this is a haploid sperm cell, this is a haploid uh, uh, egg cell or ovum, and then you get this, this uh, fusion of the sperm and the egg. Right? You get the fertilized egg, right? the ovum here. Incidentally, these polar bodies uh, end up disintegrating and dying right? and are not, not really fertilized. So if there's sperm present in the oviduct when that secondary oocyte gets, uh, gets ovulated, uh, then there is, there potentially is fer there's fertilization. That fertilized egg would then continue down and implant on the wall of the uterus here. 
that is prepared to receive that uh, fertilized egg. If there was no sperm in the oviduct, uh, when that secondary oocyte was ovulated, it enters this fallopian tube, and then would just continue down here, and there's no sperm, there's no fertilization, not going to implant on the wall of the uterus, and then all of this uh, uterine wall here is going to be shed in menstruation. Right? And so this happens in, in human females right? <coughs> on, a, on a monthly, monthly basis. Right? But there's the mammalian uh, meiotic cycle in females. In males, also happening in specialized organs and tissues. Uh, we call these testes in the male. Right? So here, <coughs> here is uh, a, a testis. Right? And if you uh, look here, so the, the testis, this is where the specialized cells are going to be undergoing meiosis and producing the sperm. Right? You have the structure of the epididymis, where they're going to mature and gain the ability to sort of uh, uh, motility to swim, that is. And then um, during ejaculation, those sperm right, move up the vas deferens right, uh, around the, uh, uh, the ureter there and are then ejaculated out through the uh, urethra. Right? Now, the, what's interesting about this, where we want to focus here, is of course on the meiotic part here. So within the testy, right, we take a little cross section through one of these tubules here. Right? And so now here is the uh, cross section. We have this cell right here. If we come up to here, this is a spermatogonium. And again, this is a cell that has been made lots and lots and lots of. And so you have this mitotic division. You're getting lots and lots of spermatogonia. And then uh, there are signals that signal that spermatogonium to undergo meiosis. So now we have this primary spermatocyte in prophase one here and you notice that the cells are migrating this way right, in the tissue toward the toward the tubule here toward the seminiferous tubule and so uh, as this cell as this primary spermatocyte undergoes uh, meiosis here's meiosis one you get secondary spermatocytes the secondary spermatocytes then enter meiosis two and you get then the result is a spermatid and again these spermatids are not yet mature right, and you see them right here and then the differentiation right, of those spermat uh, spermatids into actually uh, sperm cells or spermatozoa here right, uh, completes, the, completes the process. But you see that there is equal cytokinesis here and there's equal cytokinesis here. So all these sperm right, are gametes. They are all haploid because of that meiosis. Right. <coughs> Pardon me. So some, exam some specific examples and specific names of some cells uh, in tissues uh, related with the mammal here. This uh, image, this is a little, another little animation that if you run the PowerPoint, you can click on and it'll run. So uh, when you come to class, we'll be able to discuss meiosis here in the details. We'll do a little bit of comparison between meiosis and this mitotic phase here. So we'll be thinking about that and be ready to do that. So hopefully here now, you are able to uh, describe and explain here the meiotic cycle, focusing on the cells that undergo meiosis and the cells that are the products. We have specific names for them. You need to be able to use those names properly. Uh, what is the overall purpose of meiosis? Right? What are you generating here from meiosis? Uh, and then the mechanisms of meiosis 1 and meiosis 2. What is different here in meiosis 1 and meiosis 2? Uh, what's separating here? What is separating down here? Uh, and what do you get because of that result? And then how the DNA in the chromosomes is transmitted to the next generation. Right? We're focused on the meiosis part here. And then a little bit about uh, the specific names uh, in mammals right, uh, as an example of meiosis. Okay. Thanks for listening and bring your questions to class.